Hey everybody, it's 9 o'clock and 9 o'clock is with me, Father Warner. We are in the Tuesday of the ninth week in Ordinary Time. We will be studying Mark chapter 12, verse 13 to 17, the question about paying taxes. And I've entitled today's teaching, Round 2 Goes to Jesus. So let's read the text. Then they sent to him some Pharisees and some Herodians to trap him in what he said. And they came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and show different deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with truth. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why are you putting me to the test? Bring me a denarius and let me see it. And they brought one. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Jesus said, Give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. And they were utterly amazed at him. Now, my dear friends, for, for many of us who profess, I think, the Christian faith, when you think of the Holy Week, you telescope it into really the last part of the week. Yet it is the first half of the week, which we are doing in chapter 11 and chapter 12, which is often ignored. And this sees some of the most intense verbal skirmishes between Jesus and the religious leaders of his time. Now, a few verses earlier, um, in fact, yesterday's text that we did of Monday of the ninth week, you'll see that our Lord has sent the religious leaders packing with their tails between their legs. You know, in chapter 12, verse 12, which we ended yesterday's text, it says, they realized that he told this parable about them. Now, this parable of the wicked tenants that we heard, uh, this was no ordinary parable. For the parable of the wicked tenants, even though it has a very tidy and neatly encapsulated heading, in reality, it was not only wickedness that the rich religious authorities were culpable of, but they were culpable of murder. And that is what Jesus accuses them of. Now, the parable which Jesus narrated would not only prophesy the fall of Jerusalem and the destruction of the temple, but would also bring about the plan of God for the salvation of the world. His son, referred to in that parable of the wicked tenants, as his beloved son, chapter 12, verse 6, his beloved son would be put to death by the end of this very week um, when we come to chapter 14 and 15. Yet, my dear friends, the religious leaders were shameless. Yeah, and that's a very sad thing because we pray today that we as religious leaders don't fall in that category to be completely shameless. You know, having failed at trapping Jesus themselves, they failed because we know that Jesus sends them off. The word is in chapter 12, when they realized that he told this parable against them, they wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowd. So they left him and they went. But they left him only to send to him some Pharisees and Herodians. And we read that in verse 13. And scripture tells us very clearly that their intentions were they wanted to trap him. See verse 13. They wanted to trap him. So they send the Pharisees and they send the Herodians. Now I've often said this and you've heard this line being said that politics makes strange bedfellows. You know the Herodians on a normal day could barely stand the Pharisees. So the former, that is the Herodians, were they were politicians. They were aligned to King Herod and by extension they were aligned to the hated Romans. The Pharisees were religious lawmakers. Now, independently, these two groups had their knives drawn at each other's throats. But together, in this text, they struck a deal to lock Jesus in the horns of a dilemma. Should Jesus consent to paying the hated poll tax? Yes or no? Should we pay this tax to the emperor? Yes or no? Now, three taxes were imposed by the Romans on Judea. The first was uh, called a ground tax, which was 10% of all the grain. And then there was 20% of all the fruit and wine. The second tax was the income tax. That amounted to 1% of a man's income. Now, the third tax 
was the poll tax. It was supposed to be paid by men between the ages of 12 and 65 and women for the ages of 14 to 65. Now, what was this poll tax? Uh, it was, uh, as somebody once put it, simply because you breathe the air, you had to pay a tax. And this tax was one denarius a year. It was about a day's wage for any laborer. Now, to deny the paying of the tax would make Jesus an enemy of the state. Yet, for him to approve and say pay the tax would make him a traitor in the eyes of the Jewish people who hated the Romans. So, if I may use some artistic license, Jesus' response could have well been, as we say, show me the money. And show him the money he did because he says, give me a denarius. And they show him the money with the image of the Emperor Tiberius on it. And here was Jesus' solution. You see, the coin had an image of the emperor with a very idolatrous inscription, Tiberius Caesar Divi Augustus Filius, Augustus. So basically what he had done, Tiberius had done, he had taken on the title of divinity, which made him even more hated in the eyes of the Jews. This is one of the reasons why when you went to the temple, you had to exchange money. Why did you have to exchange? Because you could not take any graven image into the temple and here the denarius had the image of the emperor. So you had to exchange the denarius for the Jewish shekel. Of course, that is another problem because what they did was they then charged them an additional amount. Yeah, instead of giving them a fair amount, they extorted money. But that's another issue. So the point being here is why would a Jew not want to render See what Jesus says, render unto the emperor. So why would a Jew not want to render? What is render? To give back. So why would I not want to give back what belonged to Caesar? That coin is not mine. It has his head on it. It has his face on it. Even more, it has a title that says that Caesar is God. When in fact for the Jews, only Yahweh was God. So why, says Jesus, would you want to keep that with you? which is a symbol of oppression. Now, clearly Jesus was not opposed to paying tax, taxes and neither should you and me. You know, in Matthew chapter 17, verse 24 to 27, he instructs Simon, he says, go pay the tax so as to not give offense, even though sons, he says, should be exempt. Yet, in allowing them to pay the tax, he challenges his audience to be as exacting in serving God as they are serving Caesar. He says, you can serve Caesar so well, why do you not say, serve God? And here's what I want to say to a lot of people. We pay our taxes to the government because we are afraid of being thrown into jail. But when it comes to paying our tithe to God, to giving money to the church, oh, we have a whole lot of problems. Render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar and render unto God what belongs to God. Yeah? A friend of mine once said to me, he said, I don't know whether you've noticed, he said, I've seen people putting 10 rupees in 1970 and they're still putting 10 rupees in the collection box in this year. If you're poor, I understand. But if your status of life has gone up several notches and if you are rolling in money and you do not render to God what belongs to God, I am sorry to say, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. And I am not making a case for priests to get money. It is for the church to get its money. Because the church has to do the work of God. It has to do evangelization. And if today we are unable to do, compete with the secular world with regard to mass media, it is because the children of light do not see the need of giving money to promote the work of God. This is my opinion, and I'm generalizing, but hey, that's my opinion. And I've seen this as 23 years as a priest. There are people who support our mission, and I've seen this as being a parish priest, as being an assistant. There are people who just pour money and say, Father, you want to do this work, we'll help you. But the bulk of the people, you don't see that charity. Render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. 
render unto God. If you render to Caesar, if you render to the government because you're afraid of the, gov of the government throwing you into jail, why should you not care for the God? I'm not asking you to fear God. Why should you not care for God? So, if you see this text, we started in chapter 12, verse 1 to 12, and then we did chapter uh, verses 13 to 17. 13 to 17 is round 2. Yeah, Jesus won the second round. He first the won the first round with the religious establishment. Now he wins the second round with the Herodians and the Pharisees. And round two also belongs to God. Tomorrow, you think that the religious establishment is going to give up? The answer is no. I'm already telling you. Tomorrow, we're going to hear of the big guns who they are going to come out, the Sadducees. So tomorrow, we are going to hear round three. And that's going to be the knockout round because I'm anticipating and I'm going to tell you that at the end of that round we are told that no one dared to ask him any more questions. But that doesn't mean that they gave up. It means they didn't ask him any more questions. Because after this they go for the jugular. They want to kill our Lord. Pray for me my dear friends as I continue to pray for you. Thank you each day. I thank you for your love for our home here in Nuve. God bless you for all your charity. Many of you have dug deep into your pockets to help us out. And I say this that our children, I put this on Facebook the other day and do have a look at my Facebook page. And I said our children don't just have a life here. They have a beautiful life because of all of you. God bless you. God preserve you and God keep you. And say a prayer for Wilson who has served me for so many years behind this camera recording You've never seen his face, but he's the kindest, most loving person I've known. Say a prayer for him as you listen to this teaching. Bye for now.